On any given night, more than 170,000 people are living on California's streets or in its shelters. It's the largest homeless population in the country, fueled by a lack of affordable housing and the state's failure to provide adequate mental health care. One in four has a serious mental illness. It's a crisis that's bred fear in communities as violent crimes rise. And this past week, Sacramento's top prosecutor sued California's capital city for allowing it to, quote, collapse into chaos. That's the landscape Governor Gavin Newsom says he's trying to change, starting this fall with a controversial new plan on track to cost billions. It's called Care Court because it brings mental health care into the courtroom. Now judges will order people to get help and counties to provide it under a new law that emphasizes accountability and consequences. We met with Governor Newsom and found him to be fired up and fed up. The story will continue in a moment. Change has its enemies. I get it. But one thing you cannot argue for, with all due respect to all the critics out there, is the status quo. You can't. And in the absence of alternatives, what the hell are we going to do to address this crisis? It is a crisis overwhelming cities across the country. But California has been hit the hardest. And Governor Gavin Newsom says it is desperation born out of scenes like this that drove the idea for Care Court. You've used words like you're outraged, you're disgusted yeah. by what's happening on the streets. I am, because I see what everybody else sees. I try to walk my kids to the park and have a difficult time navigating the sidewalk. It's a fail-first system, not a care-first system, which means you have to end up in the criminal justice system before finally someone provides support and a bed and a solution. We've got to change that, and that's what we're doing. Everybody. Here's how it will work. A person referred to care court for a severe mental illness is evaluated. If they have an untreated psychotic disorder like schizophrenia, a judge can order a mental health treatment plan, including medication, therapy, and a place to live. The governor believes the new civil court system will help thousands get off the streets and make everyone safer by helping people before they become a danger to themselves or others. You think care court could be the solution that could save someone's life? I don't think it, I know it. It's very familiar what we're doing, even though it's novel and new and bold. Novel, new, and bold. So it's an experiment? No, it's not. When people get their meds, when people get support, we know we can turn people's lives around. This is eminently solvable. But what if someone ordered by a judge to get help doesn't think they need it? They'll have access to a public defender and can refuse treatment. They won't be sent to jail. But there is a catch. If someone in care court does refuse, a judge could refer them for conservatorship, an extreme outcome that strips them of rights and forces them to comply with treatment. This is where he would go. Anita you know, Fisher hopes to, care court will be a lifeline for people like her son, Pharaoh Degree, who was diagnosed with schizophrenia while serving in the Army 22 years ago. He's now 45. Tell me a little bit about Pharaoh. Pharaoh is the kindest, he, even from a little boy. His report card used to say, joy to have in my class. And some of the things that we've gone through, you couldn't have paid me to believe. For nearly two decades, Fisher has worked as a mental health advocate in San Diego. My son is one of those individuals. Running support groups and classes for hundreds of families when their lives are derailed by a loved one's mental illness. A lot of times he even can get very agitated, and then he starts to self-medicate, whether it's alcohol or street drugs, and that takes it to a whole different level. You sometimes feel like your son goes missing. Yes. In those moments. Yes. We would try to have the conversation with him about, you know, have you stopped your medication? And he said, well, they said, I don't need this medication. I was like, okay, who is they? And I know that it's the voices. What's you know? this like as a mom for you? Ah, yeah, it's devastating. Supporters back Care Court because the new law allows families and others, like law enforcement and first responders, to petition a court to help them get someone into treatment. Until now, Fisher says there has been little recourse, like last year when her son stopped taking his medication. For seven months, she called for a psychiatric intervention, but without her son's consent, she says her attempts were ignored. When I saw him, I had to call his name 
He'd be wrapped in blankets. Pharaoh became homeless, and Anita spent days searching for him at local spots near their home. When you would find Pharaoh on these days, what kind of condition was he in? He was just very psychiatrically ill. He would be, I'm fine, but no, he wouldn't look fine at all. Your son would be convinced that he was fine mentally, that he didn't need his meds. How do you convince him otherwise? What has to happen? He ends up arrested. It's, it's almost we have to wait for that to happen. And last October, he was arrested for vandalism. In custody, he received medication and enrolled in a treatment program. Farrow declined to be interviewed on camera, but he described to us on the phone how difficult it can be to live with his illness. Constant overthinking. Your brain is always racing. Your inner voice is always talking, racing, racing. No peace. Never any uh, solace and peace. What do you think would have happened to him had he not had that treatment? Every single time I have to start, in my mind, preparing a funeral. Mm. I have to get my heart and myself and my family ready, you know, that will he make it this time? It's not, it's not easy. With California voters overwhelmingly ranking homelessness as a top concern, we have a crisis. Last year, the CARE Act sailed through the state legislature with near unanimous and bipartisan support. It's a humane thing to do. But opponents point to the threat of conservatorship, where people can be locked up and treated without their consent. And more than 50 advocacy groups condemn CARE Court as a costly mistake likely to do real harm. Some of the words that have been used to describe CARE Court, coercive, backwards, harmful. Are any of those fair? <laughs> you laugh. Uh, I laugh. I, I, I don't laugh dismissively. Those are talking points that have been on rewind for decades and decades, and I'm frankly exhausted by them. Someone could end up in conservatorship, and that is a very big deal. Isn't Care Court saying comply or else? We have, we have people end up in conservatorship all the time, and I get why people don't want to see more of those, but we have that system already. And here's all I ask. Prove us wrong. Don't assume us wrong. Your compassion's not superior to our compassion. But that's a big gamble when you're talking about conservatorships, people's lives. Prove us wrong. Exact opposite. Wait and see. The gamble is allowing more people to die under our watch. The gamble is more families struggling, suffering. How dare we? We see it as a pipeline to conservatorship, the greatest deprivation of civil liberties short of the death penalty. Eve Garrow is a homelessness policy analyst for the ACLU of Southern California. What are the individual rights that you think someone would be stripped of under care court? The right to determine, for example, what medications go into your body. There's no forced medication in care court. There's no forced medication, but when there's pressure and coercion, you're more likely to potentially comply with treatment that actually isn't meeting your needs. Governor Newsom says that you're defending the status quo. The administration likes to propose this false dichotomy that either we force people into treatment or we let them die on the streets. You don't but feel like that's what's at stake here? I don't feel like that's what's at stake because obviously there's a third alternative. Garrow says that alternative is for the state to provide comprehensive care for all Californians with mental health disabilities. Is that realistic? Yes, it is. If we invest in those services instead of investing in a new court system, of course it is. A lot of people will hear you and say, Eve, clearly the current situation is not working. Aren't we at the point where we have to try something else? I agree completely with that. But the something else we need to try is not a civil court system. We went with Garrow to the notorious Skid Row in Los Angeles, a county where one in eight of the nation's homeless people live. For years, on and off, that included Markeisha Babers, a 28-year-old who told us she has several serious mental health conditions, including bipolar disorder. When we met her, she lived in a shelter. I go almost every day to ask if I can speak to a therapist or if I can, you know, get some mental health services or help, and there are really none. Or if you do find one, it's like, oh, well, the waiting list is six months before you can actually talk to a therapist. Or, six months? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Do you feel like you're getting medication that you need? Absolutely not. What has to happen in order for you to get that? 
Honestly, I would have to be committed into a mental health hospital because going into places that offer like volunteer services are they're backed up or they don't have enough space or my insurance doesn't cover some of the stuff that I need. When I say the word care court to you, what comes to your mind? Medical incarceration. It's just another way to mass incarcerate people and instead of it just being like criminal, it's medical now. What would you like to be done? I think there just needs to be way more attention to services and prevention rather than the consequences of not having those services. This year, the Newsom administration invested about $17 billion to fight homelessness and treat mental illness. It's chance, there's hope. But leaders in many counties say money earmarked for care court is nowhere near enough for the thousands of people expected to land in the system. Spare me, honestly, I, I, I'm a little indignant by this rhetoric. The only thing limiting people is an unwillingness to be accountable, and I'm just done with it. But that. are you overly optimistic on this one? This is a very taxed system, and you're expecting it to take on a lot more. I'm done with the excuses. You should be done as a taxpayer. Everyone watching should be sick and tired of the excuses. There's plenty of money in this space. Yet even with California facing the highest debt in the nation, Governor Newsom is asking voters to approve billions more for housing, and he admits that without enough, care court will not work. You're promising here that anybody who goes into care court will have some kind of housing attached to them. Well, I'm not promising anything here. I'm promoting a promise where there's accountability at the local level. I'm not the mayor of California. I'm the governor. And those local governments, if they don't comply, there's will sanctions. be held accountable. They are, absolutely. Foundationally, what care court is about is about accountability at all levels worth the billions of dollars that you're going to end up spending on We're this? spending more on the back end. We could save taxpayers billions of dollars and save lives. By December, Care Court will launch in eight California counties, including Los Angeles and San Diego, where Anita and Farrow live. By the end of next year, it will be statewide. What does a successful Care Court look like for Farrow? I hope he will never have to use it. And I hope that if it does, that he even sees it as a positive experience where his voice is heard. If you have to, will you initiate care court proceedings? Absolutely. I have no hesitation. It is trauma for the family to keep going through that with their loved one. Is part of this that voters are so fed up with what they see on the streets of their cities that as a politician, you've got to clean up those streets? Yeah, well, that's generally the case, but that's not the inspiration for care court. But is there a political factor in this for you? As an electoral strategy, I'm turned out. That's not the issue. The politics here is compassion. The politics is purpose. What happens if care court doesn't work? Then we learn from it. Biggest risk is that we don't take one. Last month, Markeisha Babers, the woman who was living in a Los Angeles shelter and told us she struggles with mental illness, was reported missing by her family. Does Governor Gavin Newsom have presidential ambitions? Is that a yes or a no? That was, uh, uh, was uh, at 60MinutesOvertime.com, sponsored by Pfizer.